Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for taking your time to listen to me. My name is Steven Kisaka Kibarenge. I'm a second year student taking BSc in Communication, Bachelor of Arts in Communication. My admission number is BSc NRB 4014-13. stroke Tonight I'm here to present a speech about how the democratization process in Kenya has led to the corrupt nature that is inherent in most Kenyans. The topic of my speech tonight is democratized into corruption. Abraham Lincoln defined democracy as a government of the people, by the people, for the people. The word democracy is derived from a Greek word, actually two words from Greek called one being demos, which means people, and kratain, which means to govern or to rule. Therefore follows that uh, democracy is a government that comes from the people or a government that is put in place by the people for the people's own interest. Therefore, how do the people or the ordinary people elect or put in place a government? It follows that uh, the only way that democracy uses in putting leadership in place or putting a government in place is through elections. Elections are a vital component in democracy because they determine whether the will of the people has been put in leadership or rather the, the right people have been put in leadership. The electioneering process poses a, a challenge in Kenya because most, mostly it is either corrupted or it is used for the wrong reasons. One being that during elections, most politicians will put their best foot forward by drafting very beautiful manifestos to try and convince the electorate to vote them. Most of the time, they use the illiterate who, do not, who may not be able to understand the meaning or the, the, the words behind their manifestos, but rather can be easily cheated. It sounds to me like a, like, like a, a conspiracy by the, by the elite to colonize or to economically or intellectually colonize those who are either illiterate or semi-illiterate. Therefore, if, elec if the election process is polluted by propaganda and, uh, and values that are only geared towards winning an, ele an election and not putting a nation together, it poses a risk for Kenyans or for the whole nation at large. Corruption is one of the major pillars in most manifestos. Most politicians will pose to be the best uh, positioned candidates to fight corruption. As a matter of fact, in Kenya, there is this proverbial statement that says, it's our time to eat. That means it is our time to be corrupt. And it takes a tribal perspective whereby politicians will tell the electorate that now it's our time to eat. That means it's our time to get into government. It's time for the other tribe to get out and it's time for our tribe now to get into government. Two wrongs do not make a right. It's not right that uh, we should get into government so that we can, have equal, we can have an opportunity to benefit from the resources of the nation. It is an unfortunate situation. It is a it's, it's uncalled for and it's not right because it is only driven by the selfish ambition of the politicians. Corruption is not a, a right for anybody to, to, to get once they are in government. You cannot say that it's your time to eat because you are in government so that you are allowed now to plunder the nation and take uh, whatever belongs to the nation. To, to benefit your tribesmen or to avail opportunities and, uh, 
uh, to avail opportunities and resources for our tribesmen. It is a wrong perspective that we use during electioneering process and this inculcates the nature of corruption in the electorate. For example, in 2007, the, 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 the propaganda that was put forward it was that we are voting in, uh, out, we are voting out a tribe. That is one tribe against 40 tribes in Kenya. I will not mention the tribes for, for, for the sake of my own security. That is, if, uh, if 40 tribes uh, fight or come together to get one tribe out of power, then they can have a chance to benefit from the national resources or also progress. That is not right. No wonder after the elections, the nation was torn in and uh, everyone was fighting against each other in the, in the situation that is more, most commonly known as the post-election violence. And our nation was torn into pieces and it's because of the propaganda that was put forward by the politicians at that time who wanted to get power on their side, not in, in an effort that was hammered in through tribalism. Another, an, an, another thing that has, uh, has inculcated the nature of corruption in Kenyans is the way the politicians raise funds for campaigns. This they do because they are either in power, those who the incumbent are in power, therefore they will use national resources to campaign. They will amass a lot of, a lot of money to collect as they wait for the campaign period. And those in, in, in the opposition will partner with either foreign governments or uh, businessmen who are either in suspicious business deals and uh, business organizations they will fund the opposition so that you they can win that election. Then the question lingers behind my mind, what happens when the opposition wins and yet they were funded by foreign interests and businessmen who, have, who are in suspicious deals? What follows is that the government will either give back to the investors for the, to allow their illicit businesses to flourish, that is furthering corruption, or the, govern, the, the, the nation will be for sale for the foreign interests. Therefore, the nature of campaigning and, and collecting resources is in itself corrupt and therefore it inculcates the nature of corruption in the leaders and in the electorate or the general public at large. Therefore, uh, elections have been used as a means to build or inculcate the, the corrupt nature in most Kenyans. The third thing is that Kenyans themselves will not vote for people of integrity or people that have ideas that can develop the nation without receiving something from them. A case in example is uh, Peter Kenneth who had ideas but could, did not have enough resources to dish out. The Kenyans said that they will not, they cannot eat empty rhetoric. They cannot just eat the, the uh, actually the word that was used was a fresh breath of air. Peter Kenneth was bringing a fresh breath of air. But Kenyans, because they have that corrupt nature in themselves, say that we, can, we cannot feed on fresh breath of air. We need to give us something to eat before we can vote for you. So it is a nature that has been inculcated in Kenyans and in the political leaders and in everybody that uh, seeks elections during the electioneering process, you know that that's the time that there's a lot of money. We have to be paid to vote. You have to steal to pay other people to vote for you. So it is a, the whole scenario has inculcated a nature of corruption in Kenya. No wonder Kenyans themselves nowadays, if, if a Kenyan wants something, he will, in fact, before they ask for the thing, they will ask you, how much do I give you to give this to me? It means they are so willing to give out bribes or to ask for bribes because it's a nature that has been put in them during the, by the electioneering process. You have to give out something to get something, even if it's your right, 
you will are so willingly to pay out even in jobs you most kenyans will want to pay so that they can get a job so it's a nature that is inherent in most kenyans so the the the, the solution the solution as i conclude in a, in my speech is that the solution to 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 the ills of corruption in our nation will begin from us not from the leaders because as joseph marie says that our, that our nation deserves the leaders that they have, that we deserve the corrupt leaders that we have because they have, they, you know, we elected them in power because they, they bought our votes. They actually, they didn't get there for free. So how do you expect them to be straight or to be corrupt free? Yet they paid to get those positions. How do you expect them to serve you with, without being corrupt? Because they will have to recover what they invested to get those positions, so they will have to steal from from the taxpayers or from the from the Kenyan, the common manaji. So the the nature of corruption is within us. For us to get it out from our nation and from our leadership, it means it starts with us. We have to get it out from us first. We need to get it out from us first. We need to stop it from within before. We can get it out from the leadership. Therefore, that means we will vote for ideas and not because you have been given money to vote. So uh, we need, lastly, the Anti-Corruption Commission is, uh, has this song that says, uh, in the effort to fight corruption, it says, Nachukia Ufisadi, that is, I hate corruption. It destroys my country. In Aribu inchi yangu, pamoja tuangamize ufisadi. Together, let us fight corruption. Kenyans, let us arise and fight corruption.